This is Money Exchange with Andrew Barnett. Hello and welcome to Money Exchange, the program that keeps you up to date with what's driving the big currency trends as well as the latest news and views from leading experts on where currencies may be headed next. Well, today at around 10am we saw the British pound sink by as much as 1,100 ticks in a matter of three minutes, triggering a wave of stop-loss orders and marking the sharpest drop on the pound since it opened for business post the Brexit vote back on the 24th of June this year. So what triggered the huge move? Was it a fat finger? Was it low liquidity? Or was it the French president's comments, who around the same time as the pound's fall was heard demanding tough Brexit negotiations? Whatever it was, we'll find out on tonight's show, because joining me shortly from Hong Kong is Gavin Parry from Parry International Trading. And in the studio here later on, we'll chat with senior currency analyst and director at Go Markets, Chris Gore. I'm keen to ask both guests about the pound's flash crash today and the implications for the pound in the coming weeks ahead. Plus, tonight on the show, I'll share with you how you can get your hands on free tickets worth $129 to join me for my next round of face-to-face -face currency masterclasses. But before we discuss any of that, let's take a look at this week's currency headlines. The British pound fell to a 31-year low against the US dollar this week after British Prime Minister Theresa May said on Sunday she would trigger Article 50 before March next year. Traders exited the pound, citing potential economic uncertainty in the UK and the likelihood of 0% or even negative interest rates at the Bank of England. The US dollar hit a two-month high on Thursday as traders continued to enter long US dollars positions in anticipation the US Fed will raise interest rates in coming months. Today's official non-farm farm payrolls number will be critical for the short-term direction of the US dollar, with the Fed saying its decision to lift official interest rates will be dependent on seeing continued improvements in the US labour market. The new RBA Governor Philip Lowe delivered his first monetary policy statement this week saying the Australian economy is continuing to grow at a moderate rate but inflation and labour costs remain low. After dropping interest rates in May and August this year, the RBA appears to be on the sidelines for now with respect to further rate cuts. The Aussie dollar has been falling this week against the greenback but has been rising against the British pound. It's been on the rise this week again, with more traders confident of the US Fed going to raise interest rates in 2016. Joining us from Hong Kong to share with us what he thinks the Fed may do in the last quarter of 2016 is Gavin Parry from Parry International Trading. Gav, welcome back to Money Exchange. Morning, how are you, Andrew? Thanks for having me. Before we get to the US dollar, I, I can't go past uh, what happened on currency markets today with the pound. What was your take on it? Well, I think this, in this day and age of electronic trading and, and algorithms, um, you have to take a, some of these movements with a grain of salt. We've had quite recently, there was a, a bit of a flash crash, if you want to call it, with the New Zealand dollar as well. And given it was so early out, uh, outdoors here up in Asia, it was about 7 a.m., liquidity within the, the screen itself probably wasn't built up too much. There probably wasn't a lot of depth uh, at the levels of the handles in the market. So when this uh, looks like a momentum selling order came into the market, it tested a few levels, found some vacuums and basically uh, and gapped down. So, you know, it, it quickly kind of recovered off its lows. But again, given, given the, the, the prevalence of um, electronic trading and algorithms in markets these days, you are going to have these kind of situations of extreme volatilities in a short period of time. So the pound's been steadily moving lower throughout the week and then, of course, the big flash lower today. Is this now time for traders to book profits on short pound positions, do you think? Because we obviously you know, see often that the most obvious trade is the one to probably not be in. Is the pound the most obvious trade at the moment short to be in and should they book those profits, do you think? Well, you're seeing a lot of broker comments today, and, and they're obviously not very courageous comments given what with the movement we've had with the lows. But you know, the calls of you know 120 and so forth for uh, by mid year next year. 
you know, the, the underlying fundamentals here are the fact that, you know, the UK economy will probably see a widening of its deficit. It probably will see some capital outflows and, and these things will uh, exacerbate uh, further depreciation for the sterling. All right, well, let's look across to the US because we've got the important non-farm payrolls number tonight. About 170,000 jobs are expected and, and more and more traders appear to be, uh, you know, hedging their uh, trades in the way of the US Fed raising rates. I noticed in your comments today that you see things slightly differently. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the Federal Reserve's got a dual mandate. One is uh, the, the labour market and the other one is price stability. And, while we're still seeing a, um, effectively a deflationary environment globally, and we're also seeing lacklustre or benign inflation in the, uh, in the US economy, it's, it's kind of hard to see uh, the US Federal Reserve moving too, too quickly and too fastly. One of the, um, the, the, the big areas was obviously Bernanke had a 6% unemployment line in the sand, where when he was a Federal Reserve Chair, he said, look, this is where monetary policy should start moving. And we've, we've definitely fallen down through that at the moment. So we've got to, I think we need to remember that the big thing at the moment is that there is a, a massive debt uh, environment globally and one of, the, one of the things about debt is that uh, for the probability of it to roll over maturity it needs an inflationary environment and in a deflationary environment it, there's actually an increased cost of relative payments to service debt so you know obviously the last thing that they want at the moment is any kind of pressure on the debt markets and, and I'm sure you, you know, you're seeing all the headlines at the moment in relation to debt whether it's sovereign or corporate. And so uh, you're just at the moment, you have cautioning with respect to uh, being long or overly long on the US dollar. Am I, am I right in, uh, in saying that? <laughs> well, I think you know, the, the, the general theme, whether it's you know, medium to long term, is definitely US dollar exposure. And the, 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 the Fed is definitely back into a tightening cycle or trend. But you're going to see a lot more volatility. I mean, for example, people are calling the next session or, or the one after that. We still see it as a 2017 uh, aspect for, for, for tightening. And you know, we have the US presidential election coming up. We also have this um, massive storm that's about to hit the, the coast. So these, these things are going to bring uncertainty, particularly the storm, and they're going to actually impact the, econo the economy and, uh, and the growth, which, again, the Federal Reserve isn't just looking, again, at the, the labour market. It's looking at the broad economy and also uncertainty for the markets. All right, well, so let's talk about the US dollar against the yen for a moment because the Bank of Japan, you know, is, is not far away from being in the news on a regular basis. I see this week we had dollar-yen break above a strong trend line uh, that's been running for most of this year, started about in, in January this year. What are your thoughts about upward momentum on the, the dollar-yen? Because we've seen nine consecutive days now of gains. Surely you must do for a, a pullback at some point. Well, the end's obviously a special case. It was, it was interesting today that the, uh, the Vice Finance Minister of the G7, G20 talks actually said that FXs weren't even mentioned. Um, you know, that he, can, he was able to actually say that political risk is a greater risk at the moment. And that really indicates to us that if there's an opportunity here, given the, uh, the current propensity for going long into US dollar denominated and, and US dollar itself, uh, for the BOJ to actually maybe do something to take advantage of, of this move. So with the yen breaking down at the moment to around the 104 handle testing today, um, the Tankin actually earlier this week um, showed that, that uh, corporate Japan is forecasting around a 107 level or 7 handle for the, for the yen. So the other side of the equation here is that we're sure the government and the central bank doesn't want to see uh, profit, uh, the, the profits when they come, for, come through in relation to the forecast missing because the yen isn't down at that weak level. And, and let's also remember that uh, you know, the government's kind of tied the country's boat to the jetty of, of the stock market and, and that's being impacted obviously by the yen levels because of the export side of things. So um, you know, it's in their best interest as well. I mean the government via the pension funds and via the Bank of Japan is now the largest shareholder in the top 400 uh, listed shares on the, uh, in, the, in, in Tokyo. Yeah, they're certainly building those positions uh, every month, aren't they? Now, down here in Australia, I see Citibank came out today and uh, suggested they thought there was another 10% left in the ASX, moving back up to about 6,000. What did you make of their comments? Well, again, at the moment, <clears throat> it's very much about the interest rate differentials. And, uh, you know, Australia is, is, is still quite um, strong on a positive side of things. So. The big thing about Australia is um, it's still being seen as a, a place to chase yield. It's still being seen as a place for capital to flow into. 
and obviously one of those those is the uh, classes is shares in the ASX. So while the property market has, has, has continued to rise so strong, there's still an attraction there for particularly foreign capital to, to seek yield and return in the in the uh, in shares down in Australia. Well, Gav, it seems like it's uh, be cautious on any pound position and uh, watch that non-farm payrolls number tonight for any uh, traders long on the US dollar. Always appreciate your time. Have a great weekend. Great. Thank you. Don't go away because after the break, I'll be joined by Senior Currency Analyst and Director at Go Markets, Chris Gore. Knowledge Applied is power. Incredible things are created with the right knowledge. Knowledge also breeds foresight, giving strength to manage risk and make better decisions. When you choose to trade Forex with Go Markets, you'll gain access to our foresight and expert market analysis. Analysis that could help you identify potential financial risks and wait for the right opportunities. Go Markets, your first choice for Forex. Our world moves ever faster and wonders never stop. Help arise before disaster and phones can save a crop. Mighty drills know when to dig before the markets do. Brilliant minds can make it big with smart advice to see them through. You can make the world your office. Know when packages arrive. Tailor what your network offers. Use machines to stay alive. You can keep track of your fleet Help your city run on time. Do things better on the beat. Protect yourself from cybercrime. For technology is wondrous. It can take you far and wide. It creates a future boundless. Helps your business make bold strides. In global markets or down under, we'll be there to help you strive. And together, we'll do wonders. For together, we can thrive. Welcome to QuickBooks Online from Intuit. Manage your small business finances with it. It's easy to create an instant invoice and even capture receipts. It's easy to track sales, expenses, BAS and GST. Get started with QuickBooks Online today from just $15 a month. Woolworths World Explorers have arrived. And where better to collect all 56 flip cards than in the Activity and Collectors album? Woolworths World Explorers. That's why I pick Woolies. Happy with the returns you're getting on your super? Want to know a secret? You could do better yourself. Squirrel makes self-managed super simple. Squirrel set it up for you. They're always available on the phone or online to help and can assist you every step of the way. And Squirrel can show you how to buy an investment property with your self-managed super fund. You can manage your super yourself. Squirrel makes super simple. Give them a call on 136 887 or hop on to squirrelsuper.com.au. Welcome back to Money Exchange. No doubt the pound's sudden move today caught more than just Aussie traders by surprise. And joining me in the studio to share with us what he knows about the pound's sudden fall today is Senior Currency Analyst and Director at Go Markets, Chris Gore. Chris, welcome back to Money Exchange. Thanks very much. Well, it was about 10 o'clock this morning and uh, I was sitting in front of my computer and I was doing a technical report actually for some traders and I, I couldn't help but notice that the pound was falling, but it appeared the pound was falling uh, essentially on its own. The other currency crosses weren't being impacted too much. Tell us your thoughts on the pound flash crash today and, and, and what do you think happened? Well, you're quite right. It was one of those um, those situations uh, similar to, to what we've seen in the past with the, uh, the Swiss National Bank and all of a sudden something drops through the floor and there's little, little understanding. And, and certainly in this case it was, it was unique because we, we continued to have little knowledge or understanding for some moments, some minutes afterwards. 
Um, at, at that point in time, we obviously thought of uh, a couple of things, um, and one of those is a, a fat finger error, um, and certainly the, the, the prospect of some, um, some wayward uh, algorithmic trading systems uh, was something that we thought about as well. But, um, but what, what, essentially what happened is a culmination of a number of things, and, um, and what we can see here is that uh, certainly a catalyst was uh, French President uh, Francois Hollande's um, uh, speech and, and um, commentary uh, surrounding uh, Brexit. And, um, but ordinarily, something like that wouldn't do this. And it's important we have a look at the other parts of the equation as well. And, and certainly liquidity plays a huge part. Um, and looking at, uh, at, at some of the, uh, the other factors, such as um, algos, as we mentioned before. And, but overall, I think the liquidity part is the most important thing we, we need to focus sort of on in between the closing of the US session and opening of the Asian session. I know the Aussie market, I think, was open at the time, but of course then we didn't have Hong Kong open, we didn't have other markets open. So perhaps you might be able to share with the viewers uh, with respect to what happens to the liquidity in currency markets between that closing of the US session and opening of the Asian sessions where they really the volume disappears out of the market. Yeah, you're quite right. We generally see a bit of a, a liquidity drain. Um, um, and certainly, um, uh, uh, well, in many cases, it doesn't have a material effect at all. It certainly can promote volatility, and that's precisely what we're seeing at the moment. Um, so so it appears morning. to be that it was a case of a few things coupled together. One, we were between uh, the US and, and Asia trading sessions. Secondly, we had, uh, well, we had low liquidity due to that. We had the pound had just broken to new lows overnight, and then we had Hollande's comments about we should uh, negotiate strongly with the UK, all coupled together, to cause the event that we saw. Absolutely, and one of the most important factors is um, is we're looking at a, a, a sterling at the moment with a a, um, a cardboard floor, you could say. Uh, essentially, there's not a lot of support around, and it's perfectly natural under the circumstances, given that we've got this uh, Brexit concerns. Um, while the UK economy may not be uh, necessarily performing poorly, um, it's not always about what what we're seeing from from lagging or leading indicators. It's certainly what's what we're seeing, um, uh, the prospects of the future. And often um, uh, traders have price in worst-case scenarios, and, and we have seen that to some degree, but I think in this case it really had an effect on the liquidity in the market and the amount well, of buyers was, in the what market. What I was so surprised about, Chris, was how many traders were actually long on the pound? I mean, the overwhelming trend has been short on the pound in the last few weeks, and I was just so surprised that so many traders got short long on the pound today. Do you think the market became a bit complacent about the, the pound being where it was? I mean, we, we, we were at lows. I mean, you know, the trend is our friend, as we often talk about in the trading market. But obviously, traders were caught uh, long today. Well, it's, it's perfectly natural to always see those value traders into the market. Um, I don't think there was that many of them. Um, certainly from an institutional level, there would not have been. Yep. Um, um, and, and, and case in point is the, the fact that we had such a significant drop. Um, but nonetheless, there are always um, uh, opportunities to enter something that one has perceived to, to fall, had fallen too much. Um, and that's precisely what we probably saw in the ensuing period of the, uh, um, the, the fall of the pound, where um, uh, one gets the impression that, um, that this is a result of something which is not... Um, market-driven or sentiment-driven. Yep. Um, so we saw uh, bids re-enter the market. We did see a recovery during the Asian trading sessions today. So give us your outlook for the pound for the coming few months. Obviously, there's that concern around Brexit and Theresa May pulling the trigger in between now and May next year. Um, I asked Gavin a moment ago about is this the, the time to be exiting those short positions? What are your thoughts about the medium-term outlook for the pound? Well, certainly, I think it's going to face headwinds. Um, if we have, a, and specifically um, um, looking at the um, sterling US dollar, we have a situation where we do have some moderate support for the US dollar. Um, a completely different sort of uh, uh, situation uh, across the Atlantic. Obviously, at the moment, we're looking at, um, at uh, stronger um, uh, increases in, in US interest rates and, and the like. So that, that paints a very, um, very um, clear picture of, of moderate US dollar support. Um, so 
when you're looking at that pair, um, one would expect that we continue to see sterling weakness. Um, and certainly what I mentioned before about the, uh, the, the, the Brexit um, fears, um, they're very real. And, um, and what we're seeing at the moment as well is, uh, is the European region oh, step up and say, listen, you can't just sneak out unharmed, um, which is very important. And, um, and Theresa May is obviously under a lot of political pressure there to, uh, um, to follow what the people have decided. So from what I understand it, they, they, they pull the trigger and then they've got two years, I believe, to negotiate their way of new trade deals, etc. There's, I noted today, uh, reading an article, there's 45% of UK's experts, exports actually go to Europe. So it's going to be a real challenge for them. And, and as you noted before, um, you know, with Europe um, doing reasonably well at the moment and, and all these uh, uncertainties around in the UK, it's certainly, um, you know, as you said, the, the market at the moment is selling the expectation but not so much the fact. Because you mentioned before the UK economy is actually doing OK at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the key concerns, um, uh, well, if you have, we have a look at Fran um, President, um, French President Holland's speech overnight, one of the things he brought out was the use of the term principles. To me, um, it's not about commercials or, or sometimes it's not just about the economics. No, we won't allow you to sneak out. Uh, he used the word principles and that to me suggests that it's a credibility thing. Um, so it's not going to be easy for the, uh, for the UK coming up and certainly I think it is very natural to see that resonate poorly for its, the currency in which it represents. It's funny, I was smiling a moment ago when you're talking about the French president. It just, you know, it jogged my memory that the French and the British don't particularly like each other either, do they? So I'm just no. wondering whether or not the French <laughs> were actually rubbing their hands together today, seeing a lower pound. But I suppose if we look at it, it's going to be uh, good for exporters, a little bit uh, um, more expensive for importers. So there's, there's give and take on both sides, isn't there? Yeah, you're quite right. And, and uh, the UK economy obviously runs a current account deficit as well. So um, uh, one may think that, uh, that it wouldn't be too bad to have a weaker currency in this position. I know a few UK residents here in Australia they have got a few pounds still over in the UK. They'd rather see a, a pound high. OK, let's talk about the Aussie dollar for a minute because it's been reasonably well supported this year. We've got higher bond yields in Australia. We've got interest rates here that, uh, although they're at historic lows here in Australia, compared to the rest of the world, um, they are a lot higher. What are your thoughts about the Aussie dollar in its in its short to medium term? Non-farm payrolls tonight. Are you are you bullish on the Aussie? Are you bearish on the Aussie? What are your thoughts? Well, um, first and foremost, um, uh, the Aussie does appear to be locked into a bit of a, a 300 pip range there between 74 and 77. Yep. Um, First, uh, essentially, it's not such a bad situation at the moment locally for the Aussie. Of course, we've got higher commodity prices, which generally bode well for, for the currency. Um, but certainly the Aussie is highly contingent of what we see in the United States. Um, tonight, case in point, it's the non-farm payroll. So that's going to be a huge one. And, um, and I think that we're, what we'll see is uh, Australian dollar very reactive to that. Over, over time, and certainly over the course of this year um, and to the end of the year, we do expect moderate US dollar support. Um, so that would also suggest to me that um, we'd be seeing some, um, some moderate headwinds for the Australian dollar. Um, certainly we don't think it's going to fall off a, a cliff face, but uh, um, it does appear as though that the Aussie dollar is in the upper ranges of its uh, fair value. I don't think I've met one trader not one economist or one currency analyst that has called for a lower US dollar um, between now and, say, March or April next year. So what about... Uh, we saw, obviously, our new governor here at the RBA come in um, in the last month, uh, Mr Lowe, and he left interest rates on hold this week. Um, what are your thoughts about the potential for lower interest rates here in Australia? Certainly there is some room if we have a look at the inflation environment. Um, um, the RBA's preferred measure of, uh, of inflation, uh, if I have a look, last quarter was 1.7% on year. Um, it's an important, very important month for, 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 uh, for the RBA. Obviously we've got the uh, third quarter inflation data. So I think their next move will be contingent on that. And uh, we've got one, only one more meeting, November. In December they have a break. So. Um, 
while there are some calling for an, another interest rate cut, they may very, very well uh, hold for Because now. it really is, uh, you know, they often call it their mandate. We only see in inflation data quarterly, opposed to a lot of other countries we get it monthly. So I, I definitely agree that that quarterly inflation figure is going to be really important. So it could be a big month for the Aussie dollar coming up. 170,000 jobs uh, the US expected tonight. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that before we, we, before we let you go? Well, I think if we see anything over a, a reasonable amount of, uh, of, of 130 to 150,000, I think that will continue to support the currency. Um, you have to remember that we have seen continued growth and certainly a low unemployment figure in the US below that 5%. So they're in a situation of full employment. We simply need to see that carry on and no major shocks. Fantastic. Oh, Chris, always appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so you. much. Well, in about a month from now, I'm going to be heading around the country conducting a series of face-to-face -face currency masterclasses. And on tonight's show, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come and join me with some free tickets worth $129. Now, before I share with you what and how to get those tickets, let me share with you a simple tip on some of the things I'm going to share with you at these masterclasses. I'm going to share with you some, some technical strategies that really do work when applied correctly. How to understand key currency fundamentals, tips on risk management, and what does the smart money really look for. So here's your chance to get those free tickets right now. All you need to do is jump on to trainwithandrew.com. That's trainwithandrew.com. And if you're one of the first 10 to register your name, Right now, you'll receive free entry to one of those upcoming masterclasses. So it's as simple as that. All you need to do is jump on to trainwithandrew.com. Well, it's been a big, big day on currency markets, and it's certainly going to be another big 12 hours with the US non-farm payrolls report tonight. That's all we have time for for Money Exchange this week. Thanks for your company. We'll be back at the same time again next week to chat about all things currency. Until then, happy trading.